What's up, guys? Uh, it's been a while. I don't really do a lot of videos, as you guys know, and uh, there really hasn't been much to talk about lately. I mean, there have been things, but uh, for one thing, the uh, the violation from the Kevin Harvick team, I didn't talk about it because the last time I talked about it, a lot of people got really upset. Uh, a lot of Kevin Harvick fans and stuff, and I said that, you know what, I'm just going to leave that alone, let it be, so uh, I'm not going to really get into that. It's not really worth it. But in terms of the sport of NASCAR, I wanted to talk about, you know, the future as far as, like, the immediate future, like next year or what's going to happen after the season is over, uh, and talk a little bit about um, the type of people that I tend to root for, or teams, or, or just, you know, sports figures. Um, I bring that up because, uh, as most of you know, Jamie McMurray is going to be out after this season at Ganassi, and um, the truth is, you know, he's not going to get a good quality ride next year. I don't know where he's going to end up, if anywhere. I mean, he might not get an opportunity. Um, I think he's talented. I think he, he runs pretty decent at most tracks. And, um, you know, I don't think he ever got top-level equipment. Um, even Ganassi right now, that's not really top-level. They're not... They're, they're still an, at least a notch behind, you know, the Gibbs and, and the, the Stuart Haases of the world and, and even the Hendricks. Um, so... They are much improved. They're building better cars. And he's had... His average finishes have been better and better as the year has progressed. But Ganassi is not really a top-level organization. At least not yet. But in either case, the choice has been made. They're deciding to move forward. Um, drivers are being pushed out at earlier ages now. It's not like in the old days. You would see drivers drive you know, almost to the age of 50, right, with no problem, you know, you still have that ability to race, I think, you know, and there's so much young talent now, and they're moving these kids up so quickly through the ranks that there's a lot of young talent, you know, back in the old days, maybe it wasn't like that, you, the, the talent pool wasn't as deep, and you, you, you just held on to the older veterans longer. Um, so, I'm not really 100% on, you know, I don't have any feeling one way or the other. You know, it's I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's just the way it is. Um, it's sad when it's one of your favorites and they have to go. There's no room for them. You know, like a guy like Matt Kenseth, a lot of fans, you know, he could still drive a race car. And... There's really no room for him. Uh, so now these guys reach the age of 40 and it's like, okay, you know, they could start seeing that the light at the end of the tunnel and the time's almost up. You got just too much young talent now waiting to be put into these, uh, you know, big rides. So sadly for me, you know, he's not definitely not going to have a top level ride next year. And I'm not even sure he's going to be willing to take a, you know, a, a, a less capable ride like uh, maybe like the 47 car, you know, and, you know, these teams or the 13, you know, these cars that notorious for struggling. Uh, I don't think he'd be willing to do it. And, you know, I don't know. He does definitely still want to drive, but how badly does he want it? Once he sees that the opportunities aren't going to be there for the really for rides that are at least capable of winning, um, I think he's done pretty decent at least in the second half this year. His average finishes have been better. He's been more competitive, but Ganassi just hasn't been. They're not a top level organization, at least not yet. They are making you know, improvements, and they're, they're a lot better now than they were a couple of years ago, um, and a guy like Carl Larson is definitely, they have something going 
on his team that is definitely ahead of, of what McMurray's team has been doing. Also, Larson's a hell of a fucking driver. You know, there's no denying that. But the bottom line is, um, I'm going to have, you know, eventually there's going to have to, there's going to be somebody that I, it just becomes my favorite driver. Now, I want to, it, it's not some, I don't, I don't think anyone just, I mean, some people do. I'm not a front runner and I don't know what it is. There's something about most top athletes that there's a natural tendency for me not to root for them. I don't know what it is. I can't quite explain it. You know, it's not as simple as saying I like underdogs. But yeah, there's a tendency that I do have for rooting for underdogs. But it's not conscious. It's not something I wake up and say, hey, I'm going to root for this team or this person for any particular reason. It's just I don't know what it is. But it turns out that once I become a fan, and for whatever reason, it turns out I'm, I end up rooting for most usually underdogs. In fact, there's very few instances in my life that I've been a fan of a team, a sports team, or an athlete that is always winning or winning championships. That just has never been the, the course for me. Um, and obviously, it's a lot more fun when the, your favorite athletes or teams are winning and winning championships. That's obviously what you want. But for me, it's just, I don't know what it is. It never turned out that way. There is one instance where you can say that I have rooted for front runners. But again, it's just, it wasn't like I made a conscious decision to do it, but I just... It, it was just a natural order of things. And I'm talking about the New York Yankees, right? But I grew up and my entire life within a five or six mile radius of Yankee Stadium. So it was natural for me to be a Yankee fan growing up. It's the first sport that I have ever got into, right? So I, wa I was watching baseball when I was eight, nine years old. I remember uh, th those old Yankee teams. I remember... Being at a World Series game uh, in in eighty one, I think it was the strike shortened season, and my favorite player at the time was Dave Winfield, right? Who I think is uh, one of is a, a very underrated uh, player. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer and all that, but even looking back in history, you know, he's not someone that comes to mind when people talk about the greats. But that guy had an amazing career, amazing player. But anyway, moving away from that. The fact is, I've al I was always a Yankee fan. I was born and raised Yankee. You know, I, I couldn't avoid it, and it just was natural for me, right? So, uh, not long after that, Don Mattingly was my favorite player, uh, right alongside Dave Winfield. So, uh, I really was a hardcore baseball fan growing up. Um, I lost a lot of interest in baseball, Uh I would say not long after the Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire battle, which was exciting, but I got to say when when baseball hit that steroid uh, era, I lost a lot of enthusiasm for the game. I'm not going to lie. I remember growing up when a guy who had 35, 40 home runs, that was an MVP year. And it got to the point where guys were kind of doing that shit halfway through the season. And for me, it just waters things down. It really ruined the sport. Um, every, guys that you never heard of were hitting 50, 60 home runs. I remember Brady Anderson on the Orioles. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into it. But case in point, I am not as big a baseball fan as I used to be. I'm still a baseball fan, but I don't follow it like I used to. I used to sit and watch games beginning to end. Um, I can't remember the last time I sat and watched a full nine-inning game. I can't do it anymore. Whatever happened, it definitely had a lot of connection to steroids and just the way the game was watered down. 
So it sold a lot of tickets and made a lot of interest, but it, it was like a, a fabricated type of thing. And I'm, I'm also bringing that up because I'm, in a way, I, I, I see similarities with restrictor plate racing and NASCAR and stuff like that. And reasons why I hate restrictor plate racing, because a lot of it is sort of fabricated. Now, obviously, you're not, it's not fabricated to where you, you're picking winners and losers. But you're creating a type of racing that it's not really 100% up to the driver and the teams and the decisions made and the adjustments. It's a lot of it is tied to equipment and not being able to pass unless somebody you got the right people helping you at the right time so a lot of it is out of your control that's what i hate most about restrictive plate racing so you know when you throw in things that are that that take the athletes out of it 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 really hurts the sport so in baseball for me the whole steroid thing the whole look you know Baseball looked the other way. They did. They knew this shit was going on. And when it got out of control and they finally started trying to address it, to me it was too late. I think a lot of people walked away from baseball. I, I, I haven't walked away, but I follow it from a distance, right? I'm still a Yankee fan, but I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. You know, and I used to go to, growing up, I went to a lot of Yankee games, you know. I knew Yankee Stadium like the back of my hand. I remember when the bleacher seats were $1.50. And, you know, that was a long time ago. I just don't see it the same. Uh, ever since the Yankees opened up the new stadium, I've been there maybe 10 times since they opened it. And it's a great stadium. And I enjoyed it. But I got to be honest. Uh, the in I don't feel the same, you know. Uh, I follow, like, I'll keep up with the scores when I'm watching ESPN or the local news. But I'm not as big a baseball fan. My main, my number one sport is NASCAR. And I, I, lo I love football. I love basketball. I wouldn't call myself hard, super hardcore of those fans. I'm hardcore NASCAR. And then everything else is secondary. Another sport that I grew up all my life, uh, I loved, is boxing. But as I got older and as time went on, I kind of lost interest in boxing as well. Now, I grew up, uh, I'm, my favorite all-time athlete in any sport is Muhammad Ali. To me, he's a legend. I grew up, I worshipped Muhammad Ali. Uh, I think he's the greatest sports figure of all time. And I don't even think anybody comes close. Uh, he was such an amazing and interesting person. Besides what he did as a fighter, in the, inside the ring, I found him more amazing outside the ring. So I could talk about Muhammad Ali forever. So I'm not going to go further with it. But I'm just telling you, that's what I grew up, you know, idolizing. Uh, it was Muhammad Ali. Now, when I grew up, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali's career was already over. But I knew about him. And I and I researched. And I looked at his old fights. I um, And I always loved boxing. So, I remember, I think I was 10 years old. Or 11. I don't remember if it was 1980 or 1981. But I was either 10 or 11. And I remember on wild, watching Wide World of Sports. If any of you are old enough to remember, on Channel 7, they used to uh, televise uh, huge fights and sporting events, you know, before the, the days of cable television uh, or pay-per-view, you know. Yeah, there was pay-per-view was in existence, but it wasn't, you know, you, you, you could still see big events on Wide World of Sports. And I remember watching uh, Muhammad Ali fight Larry Holmes. I cried. When I watched that fight, I cried, and I still remember that. I still get kind of choked up remembering it because I was just a kid. I was 10 or 11 years old, but that was my fucking hero. And watching him, he was... The only thing that kept him up was his courage, his just... Um, 
I don't know how to put it, but the guy had this never quit attitude, and that's all that kept him up. He was a shadow. He wasn't even a shadow of his form. That fight should never have happened. And as a kid, uh, I knew as a kid. I'm watching this, and I'm like, why won't they stop this fight? Why is this fight happening? I had those thoughts as a child, 10 or 11 years old, and I cried, man. When when that fight was finally over, that was my hero. And even, I remember even Larry Holmes felt awful. You know, that was like his idol. So, that, that those are my, you know, as growing up, that's, that, those were my two biggest loves, boxing and, and the New York Yankees. And even in the 80s, we still had great boxing, right? So even though uh, you didn't really have uh, the heavyweight division, you had the middleweights. You had the Haglers, the, the Tommy Hearns, the, the Sugar Ray Leonards, the Durans. Uh, truly great all-time fighters. You know, that was where it was at. And then the heavyweight division came back. Um, I was never a, a Mike Tyson fan. I hated him. Uh, but I got to admit, he kind of won me over after he retired. I like the Mike Tyson, the retired Mike Tyson. This guy who can laugh at himself, who is very eloquent and actually very intelligent. It's like he's finally able to just relax and be himself. And this is the guy I like. You know, when he, whenever he does a cameo in a movie... It's always great. It's funny. So, I like the retired version of Mike Tyson. I always hated him as the fighter. And I always thought he had to put up this shield, this persona, this intimidator type thing, which I always felt was fake. Like, I always knew that was his biggest weapon. Like, he, a lot of guys he beat, he beat before they ever stepped in the ring. But my favorite... Uh, heavyweight outside of Muhammad Ali was uh, Evander Holyfield. So I was a huge Holyfield fan, and he was the guy I rooted for. And there were a lot of huge heavyweight fights during that era. But after Holyfield, uh, I'm not going to say retired, because he had a, a couple of his last fights, again, should never have happened. But the, when he was already done, I think after he was done with... Uh, Lennox Lewis, you know, the heavyweight division kind of fell, to, fell apart. And in all honesty, I, I, I lost interest in boxing. I'll still watch some big fights when they happen, but I don't have that same love for, for boxing as I used to. I just, I think that if they ever get some big name fighters to come back with, with real charisma and personality, it'll, it'll come back. Because I always thought that Box, as bo as uh, boxing goes, it, it really depends on, you know, who's in it. You know, you got to have big names with, with a lot of charisma to bring a rooting interest. And, and right now, I don't really see that. So anyhow, I'm just giving you guys some insight into my rooting interest in, in athletes. And it's not, it's not something that you just look at a guy and say, okay, I'm going to be a fan. That's not how it works. Um, in, in the NBA, my favorite team has always been the Portland Trailblazers. Now, you ask yourself, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, well, this guy's from the Bronx, New York. Why is he a Trailblazer fan? Why is he a? Why does he like the Tennessee Titans? Why does he like the Vols? Why does he like the Oregon Ducks? Um... You know, uh, there isn't a rhyme or reason, right? I'll give you reasons why I first started being a fan, but it's not about just root for your home team or your home team, you know, athletes. Or, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just, for whatever reason, I like certain things. It just ends up that way. And the I would say 95% of the, the athletes I've rooted for, they ne they always come up short. And I've historically been a rooter of 
underdogs. And it's not something I've consciously done, but for some fucking reason, I've, I gravitate towards underdogs. So, how did I become a Portland Trailblazer fan? Well, I was a huge Clyde Drexler fan. That was my favorite uh, basketball player. He's my favorite all-time basketball player. Uh, I hated Michael Jordan. So, there you go. So... Someone that most people consider one of the greatest basketball players of all time, multiple championships, and I did I hated him. And I loved Clyde Drexler. I remember him at Five Slamma Jamma in Houston. Um, those of you who are closer to my age, you might remember that. Um, he was a, a, a dynamic player, just fun to watch. Uh, so he got drafted by Portland. And I just became a fan of the Trailblazers and, and, and watching him play. And, of course, I didn't get a chance to watch him play much. Very rare, you know, on televised game here or there or maybe at the Garden. I went to watch him at, at you know, maybe against the Knicks. But that's how I became a Portland Trailblazer fan. Um, and then, of course, uh, even after he left, I kind of stuck with the team and stuff because whatever reason. In football, I was always a Houston Oiler fan. I loved the uniforms. I loved my favorite player growing up was Warren Moon. And I was a huge Houston Oiler fan. So, when they moved to Tennessee, I stuck with them. And that's why I'm a Tennessee Titan fan. Because of that lineage. And I, I was a huge fan of Steve McNair and, and those teams. And, of course, they came up a couple of yards short of winning a Super Bowl. Again, you know, when when Drexler was with Portland, they went to a couple of uh, championships, did not win. So with me, I've always had this thing where they, they always come up short, right? Except for the Yankees, right? Or Holyfield, who won a bunch of uh, heavyweight titles. Um, but outside of that, it's very rare that I actually get taste of victory. So I would say for the most part, there's been a lot of disappointment in my life when it comes to sports. And in NASCAR, I started rooting for McMurray. It was just, I just liked him. I remember he subbed for Sterling Marlin. Second start, and he won. At Charlotte, and I, w I, w I was already, you know, I, I was a fan of the Coors Light 40 car. I liked it. Uh, I liked Sterling Marlin. Um, I'm not going to tell you that all. Oh, he was my favorite driver, but I was rooting for them. And plus, I'm a I'm I'm a Dodge man. So at the time, uh, that was a Dodge affiliation. So I was a big fan of that, and I was rooting for any any car that was a Dodge. I was rooting for the manufacturer as well. Plus, that Coors Light paint scheme is still one of the best paint schemes uh, ever. I wish they would come back. That thing was awesome. Um, so he won, and I was like, wow, this guy's cool. I liked him. I liked the way he carried himself. Uh, I like, I, I'm not a big fan of people that talk a lot of shit. The only guy that got away with that is, of course, Muhammad Ali, but he was different. He actually, he was charming. It was never, it never felt like this guy's a fucking asshole. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, I, I like these guys that kind of carry themselves a certain way. And I'm not here to tell you that, you know, don't root for guys that talk a lot of shit. That's just my preference. And it's not something I do consciously you know it's like i i myself am confused sometimes when i think about it so i know this 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 is a really long video but you know i haven't done a video in a while and i'm just giving you guys a little insight into uh my background in terms of my my history of sports and rooting interest and and what's coming ahead and you know a lot of question marks uh in terms of nascar uh i would say you know, my favorite all-time driver, like, is someone I never got to watch, and that's Richard Petty. Uh, and speaking of Richard Petty, I think that 
this, I think, when you look at, at the organization, they haven't done anything in how long? They haven't been relevant. Oh my God. It's got to be a, at least 30 years or, or more. Uh, ever since he stopped driving, the, the Richard Petty organization as a whole has been really nothing. They, it's embarrassing. And I do think that it hurts NASCAR a little bit that your biggest name... It's, I mean, Richard Petty is the Babe Ruth of NASCAR. The king. And it really... It must hurt the product when the biggest historically biggest name, right? I'm not going to tell you he's the biggest name today because, really, this is from another era. However, he's a team owner. And I think it would be really good, a good at least a good shot in the arm for NASCAR if, if they could ever find success for that 43 car. Um, it's an iconic car. I really, really like Bubba Wallace. In fact, I could see myself becoming, that might be the guy I end up rooting for. But like I said, it's not a conscious decision. And I know right now that I'm going to end up with a lot of disappointment because there's nothing that shows that Richard Petty's organization is headed in the right direction the future of that 43 car I don't there I don't know how they're still in the sport you know it's because of the the iconic history but you're going back you know almost half a century when when that was a, a big deal that 43 car and I would love to see that that organization I would love to see a, the the petty name become something huge again. But it isn't going to happen the way it is now. I think, one, they're a one-car organization. I think they need another car. They, they maybe combine forces with somebody, right? It's very rare that a one-car organization can find success. Now, Furniture Row did it. You got to have the right people, and of course they did have an affiliation. I think with Hendrick, and then now with uh, Gibbs. You know, but whatever they did, it's it's a rare thing, right? I think Richard Petty Motorsports desperately needs to combine forces with somebody, and the only realistic combination it would have to be with Childress maybe they if they I don't know how they would do it because there's a limit to how many cars you can have as an organization but by themselves I don't see them going anywhere they're not building competitive cars and I think Bubba Wallace is talented and I think he can be competitive if you gave him good race cars and Unfortunately, I don't see that happening anytime soon. In fact, I see a future where Bubba Wallace ends up somewhere else down the road. I'd hate to see it because I really, I'm a big fan of Richard Petty. I love that 43 car and I'm, and I'm a big fan of Bubba Wallace. I just like the guy. I want to see him succeed. And it would be awesome. It would be like catching lightning in a bottle for me as a fan to watch Bubba Wallace finds success with that 43 car. But that's living in fantasy world. That isn't going to happen unless they do something desperate. They really need to do something because the way things are now, they're just loafing along and that car is not even competitive. So, I don't know where I'm going to end up, where my rooting interest is going to end up. There's a couple of guys I really like. I like Kyle Larson. I like Anassi Racing. I think I'm definitely, I'm probably going to be rooting for those guys for the most part. Um, and they are competitive. So, you know, 
I'll probably I, I I like Dave Blaney a lot. Um, I don't like Logano and I don't like Kozlowski, but I do like Blaney. Um, I don't know, man. Who else? I like Suarez, but that's another future that's up in the air. They they kicked him out to make room for Martin Truex, which I mean, you know, I hate watching these organizations like just dominate. They just they're stockpiling all the top talent, and I'm not just talking about the drivers, but the crews, the 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 crew chiefs, the the engineers. You know, they're monopolizing the sport, and I think it's bad. You know, I think one of the things that have been missing from NASCAR as a sport is the idea that these single car teams or maybe two car teams can actually uh, compete for championships in the sport. I think it's down to Gibbs, Stuart Haas, and Hendrick, and they're dominating. And I don't, how can, you know, and yet yeah, Truex won a championship. But he's a, he did it as a saddle. It's really a satellite team. And, you know, that uh, outside of Truex, you don't really see a threat, you know, outside of the Gibbs or the Hendricks or, or the, the Stuart Haas uh, groups, right? Childress has kind of fallen back. They're not really a top tier team. I think they, they've kind of dropped a bit. They, there's more to me on par with like Ganassi, so they can compete from time to time. They'll they'll put up a fight, but really they're not with those guys. So I think that hurts the sport, and and I think that really not having that 43 car, that Richard Petty name, be relevant in the sport has really hurt the sport. And I'm now that in that. When I'm talking about that, that really goes back a long time. You know, this isn't like the most recent stuff, but that's been a, a problem for such a long time. Um, and I think that it would be a good shot in the arm for the sport, for that 43 car to, to really find some success again, to, to see Richard Petty and hear his name involved in the sport in a successful way, not just as... You know, talking about his iconic past, but as an owner. Um, so, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon, unless they make a serious change. So, basically, what's what's coming up ahead for NASCAR? I don't know. We got this new rules package coming up. I'm not really confident in it, but in 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 all fairness. I want to give it the opportunity. You know, I want to see it play out before I really say anything. And I'm, I'm going to give it a chance. Uh, if it turns out to be, like I talked about before, the all-star race package, and if it turns out to be anything like that, week after week, it's a fucking problem. It's a fucking problem. And uh, so... I'm hoping it doesn't turn out to be like that, because for me that's manipulated. It's 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 just a fabricated form of racing. It it should be about the driver and the teams and the crew chiefs, and, and that's what it should be about. Um, you know, we hear a lot about how they want the cars to be harder to drive, so it could be more in the driver's hands. I think. You ask any professional, they will tell you that these cars today are easier to drive than, than older cars from back in the old days. Um, so that doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, when you hear people in the sport of NASCAR talk about putting it back in the hands of the drivers, but then they're doing things that, to me, it does the opposite. You're, aren't you taking it out of their hands by making all these changes? You're trying to do certain things. Like with that All-Star. The All-Star package, I hate it. Um, but, like I said, it might not turn out to be that way. So, I want to give it a chance. But, I don't want to see 
just a fabricated type of thing in the sport. So I don't know where my where I'm going to end up going in terms of my rooting interest. It's a natural thing. Uh, it just, you know, it's not something you just sit down and say, I'm going to root for so-and-so because he always wins. You know, being a Jamie McMurray fan has not been easy. He hasn't seen a lot of success. But in, in a way, I think that's what makes it great because... I've stuck with him through thick and thin. I thought he was going to find success when he went to when he left Ganassi the first time, and he went to Roush because at the time Roush was the top dog. But then, when he went to Roush, they were on the decline, and it, and nobody saw it coming. They had five cars at the time, I remember, and NASCAR eventually stripped it down to four cars because they said these guys can't have. All these fucking cars out there. And I thought that was a good decision. And to be honest with you. I even think three cars. It should be three cars the limit. I don't like the fact that these guys can have four fucking cars. As an organization. It allows them to monopolize the sport. And uh, I don't like it. I don't think it's good. But it is what it is. The bottom line is. He went to Roush. And then he had. He did, he wasn't getting the best of, of I mean, I know, I know that it, I'm making excuses for him, but he, Roush was on the decline when he went there, and he, it was terrible. Uh, so it turned out to be a bad decision. Then he finally came back, and he had some success coming back to Ganassi, but they weren't the top. They weren't building top flight cars. So I think he had a lot of bad luck. You know, he, he just. Consistently getting good race cars, it wasn't in the cards for him. But through thick and thin, I've, I've been a McMurray fan. Um, he's had a handful of wins, and I could tell you those wins really felt huge because they were so rare. You know, if you're a, a, a Jimmy Johnson fan, yeah, you saw him win a gazillion times. And it's great, and yeah, you hoo hoo, you could celebrate. But you know, the wins aren't as they don't feel as, as exciting. Um unless you you were I mean, unless you were a Jimmy Johnson fan when he first came into the sport and nobody really fucking knew anything about him except Jeff Gordon and and you said and you just liked him. And then you rooted for him, and then you watched the fucking success happen right in front of your eyes, literally overnight. Then that's fucking awesome. But a lot of you know, a lot of guy, a lot of people become bandwagon jumpers. They just jump on a bandwagon. And I'm not saying everybody's like that, but I'm not like that. So, as you could see, I've talked about some of my favorite athletes, some of my favorite teams in sports. And really, the only one you can say had that has had uh, regular success is the Yankees. So I'm used to rooting for underdogs or you know athletes or teams that just come up short. So I don't know where the future lies. I can tell you right now, I really, really like Bubba Wallace. I like his personality. I think he has talent. I've all you know. I love that 43 car, uh, the history, the, uh, I fan, big fan of Richard Petty, of the history, but I don't see anything happening there. But knowing myself, I can see myself just getting stuck watching races and just focusing on that car and suffering right along with any other fans. And it sucks because... I just, I'm not that type of guy to just say, hey, I'm just going to be a Kyle Busch fan because he's fucking great and he wins a lot. I, I just don't have that in me. I, it's, it's just, to me, I don't know. I don't, I can't do it. So I guess I'm destined to a lifetime of, you know, rooting and, and feeling the agony of defeat. So what do you guys think about you know, the upcoming season, I know that we still have, you know, this championship to finish. Um, 
I don't really have any rooting interest in who wins the championship. I can honestly say that I don't want Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch to win. So I guess I'm okay. I don't even like Logano. I don't fucking like that guy. I, I did not like what he did with uh, Truex. I know a lot of people were like, hey, that's rubbing his racing. You know, I'm not going to turn this into an argument, you know, like with the whole Kevin Harvick thing. It is what it is. I didn't like it. I think that Truex raced him really hard and clean for 10 or more laps. And he made that fucking pass. He earned it. And he never made contact with him. And then this guy just came right back and fucking took him out. And I thought that was low. That I could never root for a guy like that. I don't know how people could... I don't know, man. I It didn't sit well with me. It is what it is. It happened. Uh, I'm not even a Truex fan. I just... I didn't like that. I think he races clean uh, for the most part. And he's very respectful. And I respect that about him. And watching him race him that hard for that long. That was a great race, by the way, uh, at Martinsville. And that was just foul, man. I don't know how anybody could defend that. And yes, I get it. Rubbing his racing. Or there's people that are like, hey, man, he really wanted it. You got to do whatever it takes. Nah, man. You know, that's what differentiates me from other people. You race as hard as you can, and I don't mind a little bit of side contact, you know. Rubbing is racing, right? But that was more than that, man. He fucking just plowed him out the way. I can't respect that. And that's just the way I am. But I'm not here to start a, a war with fucking Logano fans or whatever, you know. That's just how I feel about it, but... I don't want to see Kyle Busch or Harvick win. So I'm okay, I guess, if anybody else wins. But really, if there's one guy I guess I could root for, it's Truex. Uh, it is what it is. So I'm curious to know, what do you guys think um, about these young drivers uh, next year, the rules package, all that stuff? Um, there's a lot to look forward to. I'm sorry. I know the video's long, but I haven't done a video in a while. And I just wanted to get into some detail, uh, as to why I root for certain teams. And there's no real rhyme or reason for it. But, um, I'm not a bandwagon jumper and I'm not a front runner. It's hard for me to just jump and, and root for a guy that's already successful. I don't know what it is, so I'm curious to know what your thoughts are, and I look forward to your comments.